Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to have a look at maximum demand and diversity. And this is the principle that uh, for a given circuit, say a 6 amp lighting circuit, that does not mean it's going to be drawing 6 amps all of the time, or even any of the time. And uh, if you get the circuits in your consumer unit, for example, and uh, add up the ratings of the circuit breakers, you'll probably find that they come to far more than the 100 amps rating of the main switch. And of course this is fine because in reality you're not going to be drawing that kind of current uh, all the time or say even any of the time. So obviously there's some method involved of calculating what the maximum demand will be. So obviously we're going to have a look at that. So we'll start by having a look in the uh, two books to see what the official picture on this is. And then we'll have a look at some more practical examples of sort of real situations. So first of all we'll have a look inside the uh, BS7671. And there's actually only one uh, part that applies here and it's in chapter 31. Uh, let's have a uh, zoom in there. And you see it says here, maximum demand and diversity. And for economic and reliable design of an installation within thermal limits and admissible voltage drop, the maximum demand shall be determined. In determining the maximum demand of an installation or part thereof, diversity may be taken into account. And that's all actually it says, so uh, that was most unhelpful. So uh, we'll uh, put that book away and uh, look in the other one. So other than actually telling you that it's allowed, that didn't really give you any guidance uh, whatsoever. Now uh, I've got the other book here, the uh, on-site guide. Guide notably being the word importance here. It doesn't mean this is the only way to do it. It's just a uh, suggestion about what you could do. And Appendix A is the one that concerns uh, maximum demand and diversity. And as says here, the whole load of text here, which uh, I'm not going to uh, read in detail, but uh, suffice to say, it uh, just uh, summarises that there are various uh, methods and uh, principles that can be used. So moving on to uh, the sort of facts of the information here, we've got this table A1 here, and this gives some examples of uh, fairly common types of circuits. And at the top here we've got socket outlets other than 2 amp socket outlets and other than 13 amp socket outlets, so that's going to be very limited, that's going to be uh, say possibly 15 amp types or those 16 amp blue efforts. And in the case of those, it's the rated current, so really no surprise there. Two amp socket outlets, if you have such a thing, which is probably going to be used for lighting these days. The current demand to be assumed is actually 0.5 amps, so notably considerably less than the two amps. I say both of those are fairly uh, unlikely, certainly in a typical house. Next we have the lighting outlet, and uh, current equivalent to the connected load with a minimum of 100 watts per lamp holder. Now this may have been all very well 20 years ago, but uh, these days, of course, the chance of people putting 100 watt lamps into the, each room is uh, very minimal. You probably can't even buy such things in most places anymore, and of course with the prevalence of uh, complex fluorescent and LED lighting, the uh, realities are that uh, 100 watts per lamp holder is now uh, pretty much an obsolete thing to do, but nevertheless that used to be the uh, case there. Various uh, low powered things here, electric clocks and shaver units and all kinds of other stuff, so in other words, just ignore them because the current they're using is so tiny that uh, it's not even worth considering. A household cooking appliance, so that's your sort of freestanding cooker, or possibly a separate hob and an oven because basically it's the same kind of arrangement. And this has this rather odd arrangement here of the first 10 amps, plus 30% of the remainder, and plus another 5 amps if a socket outlet is included in the control unit. So. As you can see there, it's uh, various uh, possible ways of reducing the amount from the actual total of the uh, circuit or appliance you've got. And there's just no there about everything else is either the uh, rated current or normal current. Now I've also got this table A2 on the next page, and it gives various uh, different types of uh, circuits here. And then you've got three columns here, which is uh, just for the different types of premises. So essentially houses, uh, shops, offices and the like, and uh, hotels, boarding houses and guest houses. So we'll just have a look at the uh, houses part uh, to start with. So we've got a lighting circuit, it's recommending that you should uh, assume it's 66% of the total current demand. I know that's not 66% of the actual rating of the circuit breaker, it's just 66% of whatever the total current demand is. And uh, if we're going to use what's in here, that will be the uh, 100 watts per actual light fitting as we saw on the previous page. Heating and power, it's saying 100% of total current demand up to 10 amps, and 50% of anything over 10 amps. So if they had a 32 amp circuit, uh, for example, or a 32 amp load, you're talking about 10 amps, so then half of the remainder, which would obviously be the 22, so that would be 11, so that's uh, obviously 10 plus 11 is 21. Uh, cooking appliances, well, we've seen a similar thing to that on the previous page. 
Motors, of course, not applicable in a house. Uh, water heaters, 100% uh, of the uh, largest one and 100% of the second largest one, and 25% uh, full load of the remaining appliances. And then for water heaters, floor heating and uh, other space heating, diversity is not allowed. And then the final two on the back here, uh, standard uh, arrangement of final circuits in accordance with Appendix H, which is your sort of ring circuits and that type of thing. 100% uh, of the largest circuit and 40% of every other. And then socket outlets, other than those included in uh, Section 9 and stationary equipment. And again, that's another 100% plus 40% uh, of the other points. So that's what the uh, books have to say on the matter. And uh, of course, that wasn't very helpful at all. It just gives you, uh, in the case of this one, nothing. And in the case of this one, some uh, rather outdated guidance on how much power things may or may not use. So let's just get rid of these and uh, have a look at some proper examples and how this might actually work in reality. So let's have a look at the uh, practical examples. And uh, we'll look at lighting to start with. Now, in a typical house, uh, it may have just say, a single lighting circuit if it's an older property, like sort of a three-bedroomed uh, semi-detached or something. And uh, typically your lighting circuit would be a uh, six-amp circuit. And at 230 volts, that uh, equates to a power of uh, 1,380 watts. Now that's actually quite a lot. So uh, of course, in reality, it's highly unlikely you're actually going to be drawing 1,380 watts. And uh, the first thing to do is see how many light fittings there actually are in the property. Now for a three bedroom semi-detached, you're probably going to have three bedrooms upstairs, of course, plus a bathroom, and there's obviously going to be a stairway or something as well. So that's five light fittings upstairs. And downstairs, you're going to have two rooms, kitchen at the back, and of course hallway at the front as well. So that's four downstairs. So that will be a total of nine light fittings. And if we use the uh, somewhat outdated example in the book, of 100 watts per light fitting, then of course it's 9 times 100, which uh, gives you a total of 900 watts. So already we're considerably less than the uh, 1380 watts that the uh, circuit could actually deal with, because of course uh, there's only 9 fittings in the building, and even in the unlikely event that you turn them on all simultaneously, and they all had uh, 100 watt lamps in there, then you're only going to get to a total of 900. But uh, of course we can go further than this, and uh, again using the example in the book there, it suggested we should use 66% of the total load up for the particular circuit. So in the case of 900 watts, 66% uh, of 900 watts is actually uh, 594. In fact, it's two thirds, so uh, effectively just under 600 watts there. So from the uh, alleged power of the circuit of 1380, we're actually down now to 594 watts, so considerably less than half. And in terms of the actual current there, it's just a question of dividing that by the 230 volts. And that will give us a current for the particular lighting circuit of uh, around 2.58 amps. So from the 6 amps we've got on the actual circuit, the actual load is going to be something like two and a half amps. Of course, it's possible that uh, all nine could be turned on at once, in which case the load will be higher. But the reality is that in a house, it's very unlikely that every single light will be turned on at the very same time. And of course, kept in that way for an extended time, because you're going to move around the building, lights are going to be turned on and off all the time. Now, that's all very well if you have 100 watt lamps, but uh, as I said in the uh, previous segment, the reality is, is you can't actually buy 100 watt lamps anymore, or if you can, they're certainly uh, not common. And of course, that was referring to the old uh, incandescent type lamps. But of course, these days it's the uh, energy saving varieties, the complex fluorescent or LEDs. So let's do the same thing again, but uh, let's try it with the uh, more realistic options of using some energy saving lamps in there, which in reality is going to be what people use because that's basically all you can get these days. So obviously, the uh, circuit's the same, it's still six amps, and in theory, that's 1380 watts. And we've still got those nine uh, light fittings in the building, the five upstairs and the four downstairs. But instead of 100 watts of fitting, let's say that it would actually be uh, 20 watts per lamp fitting. And that would possibly be one of those sort of complex fluorescent things which uh, claims to be the equivalent of an older 100 watt incandescent. And of course, if you use LEDs, this will be considerably less. You're probably looking at something like a 10 watt LED. 
So same as before really, it's just 9 times 20, so that will give us a total actual wattage as it were of 180. Now straight away we're already uh, a fraction of what we had before, but uh, we can still apply that 66% deal because though the type of lighting may have changed, the fact is you're not going to have every single light on all the time in your house, so again the 66% uh, thing can still apply. So of course 66% of uh, 180, and that will give us a total of uh, 118, or I said 118.9, but uh, say 119 watts for the uh, whole building. And again the uh, actual current there is just dividing by the voltage, which is 230, and uh, just divide by the 230 volts, and that gives you a current of approximately 0.5 amps. So in this case, uh, which is probably more realistic, your 6 amp circuit most of the time is only going to be having around half an amp actually on it. So of course in this case massively less, uh, more than 10 times smaller than the rating of the uh, circuit breaker would actually imply. Now of course it's uh, only one example here, we've got 9 uh, fittings, that would be sort of a light hanging down in the middle of each room. Of course plenty of people don't have those anymore, they may have those uh, down lighters or other things in the room, but the principles will be exactly the same, it's just add up the number of light fittings and the uh, likely load in each one, and then just see what the total is and take 66% of that. And certainly for things like down lighters, if they're going to have those dreadful halogen things, then the total load can actually be uh, the full uh, 1380 watts because those halogen down lighters are typically 50 watts each, and if you put 10 of those in a room, well that's 500 watts being thrown away in a single room. But of course you wouldn't fit those if you had any sense, you'd fit uh, LED equivalents, which again are only going to be sort of 5 watts each or something, and even with 10 of those in a room, the whole room's only going to be 50 watts. So again it's going to be considerably less than the original 100 watts per room, and of course in reality you might not have 10, you might have sort of 5 or something, and uh, it's always going to come out as a considerably less figure than the uh, 1380 watts or 6 amps that you started out with in the first place. Now for power circuits, as in ones with uh, sockets on, and this is the uh, point 0.9 in the table, a uh, ring circuit of uh, socket outlets again will be that uh, 32 amp uh, rating, and again that's the uh, 7360 watts. Now sockets are uh, particular bother because of course you can never know what people are going to plug in there, they might plug nothing in, or someone could come along with uh, three 3 kilowatt electric heaters and use them all simultaneously. So generally it's uh, rather difficult, in fact impossible, to know exactly how they're going to be used in the future. But if you go with what's in the book there, it's suggesting that it uh, should be 100% of the demand of the largest circuit, and in reality they're all going to be uh, 32s if they're ring circuits, plus 40% of the demand of every other. So let's assume in our house we've got two of these circuits, one upstairs and one downstairs, that's a fairly common arrangement. So in this case it would be 100% of the first one, of course that's just going to be uh, the 32, and then 40% of the second one, so that's 40% uh, of another 32, and that's actually 12.8. So the total of those then will actually come to uh, 44.8 amps. And so that's assuming you had an upstairs uh, ring and a downstairs ring. However, something else to consider with this, and this is not in the book, is that in the past it was fairly common to have a house which had a 32 amp uh, ring circuit with the socket outlets, and that actually covered the entire house, upstairs and downstairs. So in that case the uh, maximum demand would of course just be the 32 amps. Now if you decided to rewire this property, and instead of putting a single circuit in for the uh, whole house, you then put the two separate circuits in, as we've got here, so the 32 upstairs and then the 32 downstairs, have you actually changed the total load that's going to be used in the house? And particularly if you put the same number of socket outlets in there, the reality is no you haven't. So although this is what's suggested in the book here, 32 plus 12.8, uh, the reality is that in most cases it could in fact just end up being as the 32, which would be the maximum rating of a single circuit, because if you've got the same number of socket outlets in the building, you're not just going to be using any more equipment than you were to start with, 
It's just the fact that you've divided it up into two separate circuits. Now, in theory, you could, of course, overload that more because you've got uh, two lots of 32 rather than a single lot. But if you think about the types of appliances in use these days, the vast majority are going to use extremely small amounts of power. So the days of uh, three kilowatt fan heaters are largely gone. And modern appliances, televisions and the like, you're talking sub 100 watts each. So even if you plug loads of stuff in in every room, your total load is going to be extremely small. It's going to be nowhere near 44 amps or whatever in a typical house. I mean, 44.8 amps, that's actually a load of uh, more than 10 kilowatts. And bearing in mind, that's just on the socket circuit. So this, although it's what's in the uh, on-site guide, it's somewhat unrealistic for the majority of properties as uh, a 10 kilowatt load, the house will get rather warm to say the least. And it'd be actually rather difficult to find equipment in your house that actually added up to 10 kilowatts, Never mind, use it all simultaneously and uh, have that kind of loading going on throughout the building. Now let's have a look at the example of a cooker circuit. And in 99% uh, of cases, uh, you'll find that the cooker circuit in a typical house is a 32 amp circuit. And at uh, 230 volts, uh, that would be a load of 7,360 watts. Now, if you actually go and look at the specifications of cookers or uh, separate hobs and uh, double ovens, you'll find that in many cases, the rating of those exceeds 7,360 watts by quite a large margin. And in fact, if you go and look at, say, a typical four ring electric hob, it's quite possible that that alone is in this sort of uh, seven kilowatt range. And then, of course, you've still got the double oven to add on top of that. So in most cases, it's going to be exceeding that. However, the point about that is that you're not going to be using all of the elements in all of the things at the same time. And even if you turn on all of the rings and both ovens simultaneously, although all the elements would actually switch on at the same time, they would only remain on for a fairly short period. Because, of course, once the uh, rings and the oven is heated up, those elements are going to start switching on and off to maintain the temperature at whatever you've set. So the worst case scenario is you're going to have a short duration overload, but it's only going to last for a few minutes, which is really when the uh, oven and hob and things are heating up to temperature. Now, there's a formula in the book uh, for ovens or cooking circuits, and uh, that's just an example with that. And with everything else, of course, the same principles apply. We're looking at the rating of the appliance, not the uh, rating of the actual circuit breaker. So in this case, let's say we've got a uh, separate hob and oven arrangement, and we've got the hob, which uh, say has a rating of uh, 7 kilowatts. And then we've got a double oven, which uh, has a rating of 4.5 kilowatts. And that's a fairly uh, sort of typical sort of value. Uh, most sort of single ovens are in the sort of two and a half to three kilowatt range. And obviously we've got two of those, it's going to be in the sort of four and a half range because uh, one of the ovens is usually smaller than the other. And again, the hob there, you're normally looking in the sort of region of uh, sort of two kilowatts or so for the larger rings and possibly sort of 1500 for the smaller ones or 1500 watts. So in this case then, the total load of those two items, uh, of course, just add the two together and that comes out to 11,500 watts or in fact just 11.5 kilowatts. Now the uh, formula provided in the on-site guide is the first 10 amps of the rated current. So let's just find out what the rated current is first of all. So uh, 11,500 and of course just dividing that by uh, 230 volts and that will give us the load current of that which actually comes out to be 50 amps. So the first 10 amps of that, of course, is just going to be uh, 10, so it's pretty obvious. And then the next part is 30% of the remainder of the rated current. So the remainder is essentially just 50 minus the 10, so that's 40. But of course, we only want 30% of that, so 30% uh, of 40. And 30% uh, of 40 is actually 12 amps. And then the final part is, uh, if there's a socket outlet in the control unit, which uh, there quite often is, then there's an additional 5 amps uh, to add in there. So then that's going to be a 5 amps to add in there. And then the uh, total assumed load then is just those three added together. So it's 10 plus 12 plus 5, 
and the total of all of that comes to 27 amps. And as you can see, 27 amps is uh, considerably less than the 32 we have on the circuit breaker. So again, that's not going to be a problem. And uh, this is quite a powerful arrangement of uh, an oven and hob. And of course, if you used uh, smaller figures to start with, then obviously it's going to be even smaller than 27. And uh, this really illustrates the point that uh, although the total amount uh, may well add up to sort of 50 or even more in some cases, by applying the uh, formula provided, then it's almost always going to get down to less than the 32 amps and in many cases quite a lot less. And certainly if you found it was uh, getting near or just over the 32 amp rating, then the easy option is just to remove the socket outlet on the cooker control, and that will give you another 5 amps straight away. So in this case, uh, of course, it would be rather than 27, it would actually be 22 amps, a full 10 amps less than the rating that we had of the circuit breaker. And note it doesn't actually matter whether it's a freestanding cooker, as in with the sort of four rings on top and two ovens underneath in a single appliance, or if it's a, a separate four ring hob and a double oven, or even if it was a four ring hob and two separate single ovens, same principles apply. It's just a question of adding up the total of all of those things, see what the actual rating is, and then applying the formula as given in the book there. Now the final thing we'll look at here is a heating circuit. And uh, for example, storage heaters, which are those things which uh, charge up overnight using the cheaper rate electricity, and then just release that heat during the day. And then of course turning heating on would be much more expensive. Now no diversity is actually allowed for things like storage heaters, because when they switch on, they will actually take their full load current for several hours in most cases, as that's basically what they're designed to do. And that can actually be up to seven hours if the weather was actually very cold and a full charge was actually required in the heaters. So a typical circuit for a storage heater would be a 16 amp circuit. And for the purpose of this, we'll say we've actually got four storage heaters in this particular building. And therefore, of course, we have uh, four 16 amp circuits. It's generally the case that it's one circuit for each heater. So you'd find normally a separate uh, consumer unit uh, on a separately switched supply. So it also only turns on at the required times, which is normally between sort of midnight and 7 a.m. or some similar times to that. And if you added up all of the uh, ratings of the circuit breakers, then of course you would get to a total of uh, 64 amps, which is certainly uh, quite a lot. But as with the other types of circuits, it's not the rating of the circuit breakers which matters, it's the rating of the actual things which are attached to them. Now storage heaters come in various sizes, typically uh, there's three common sizes and there's also a very small one which is uh, seldom used. And they generally go in multiples of 850 watts. And this is simply because the smallest heater has one element in of 850 watts, and then the next size up has two, and then three, and then the biggest one has four elements. So in this case uh, we'll say we've got the uh, four heaters, and the first heater is a fairly large one, and that's actually uh, 3400 watts. And then we've got two sort of middle size heaters, which are at 2,550. And then there's another one of those. And then the fourth one, we'll say, is one of the smaller ones, which just has the two elements in, so that's 1,700 watts. And of course, you can get these ratings from the actual uh, heaters themselves. But uh, if not, then it's really just a question of seeing how many elements are inside. So it's either one, two, three, or four multiple are by 850 and 850 watts has been a sort of standard heating element size for storage heaters for many decades so that's a fairly safe assumption to go on. So if we just add up the uh, four ratings we have here and that comes to a total of 10,200 or uh, 10.2 kilowatts and uh, to convert to the current it's just a question of dividing by the voltage so Dividing by 230 volts, and it gives our total current there of 44.3 amps. I notice that's still quite a lot less than the uh, assumed 64 from the fact of the uh, four 16 amp circuit breakers. So, although we had 64 from those, when you actually look at the heaters themselves, the uh, total load is actually only going to be 44 amps rather than 64, so a full 20 amps less.
So no diversity is actually allowed here. The uh, low current is actually going to be the 44.3 amps. And this is because when storage heaters switch on, they do actually take the full load. And even on a sort of part charge, if it was fairly warm weather, it's still going to take this uh, load current for at least an hour or two. And in very cold weather, it could actually take this for the full seven hours charge. So uh, 44.3 amps in this case is the actual current that we're looking for. Now, the total load of the installation, it's simply a question of applying those various rules to the individual circuits and then adding up what you've got at the end. So we assume in this house we've just got the uh, four circuits here. So the lighting circuit, as you can see, is a six amp circuit. But as we saw previously, the actual load is going to be considerably less than that and in many cases a fraction of one amp. And in this case we'll assume it's got the uh, sort of fluorescent type uh, energy saving lamps. And as we saw previously, we can actually say that the current there will actually be one amp. Certainly nowhere near the six. Sockets. Now according to the book we should take the uh, socket or the first socket circuit at the uh, full rating. So uh, we'll do that in this case. Let's say it's for the uh, whole house. So certainly possible that uh, it could be that rating. Let's say if you had two socket circuits in the house, then uh, it's 32 amps for the first and a percentage of it for the second one. Although in reality you can probably say it's just 32 amps in total. Because again, like I said earlier, if you uh, rewired the property and then just put two circuits in instead of one, you haven't actually changed anything other than the fact that there's two circuits. The number of outlets and the appliances things used could actually be exactly the same. So we'll call it 32 amps uh, in this case. Now the cooker here, as we saw before, is a question of seeing the rating of the uh, cooking appliances and then applying the formula of the 10 amps plus 30% uh, of the remainder and uh, 5 if there's a socket outlet. And we used the one we had on the example previously, so in this case it will actually come out to be uh, 27 amps. And then finally we've got an electric shower here. Now these go along similar lines to the uh, storage heaters and other things, so there's no real diversity allowed because when the shower is turned on, it will draw the full load current all of the time. Now some showers have a sort of a half setting where it draws half of the power, but the reality is certainly in the winter people are going to use it on the full setting, so you uh, need to assume that it's going to use that all of the time. But again, it's not going to be the 40 amps necessarily, it depends on the rating of the shower itself. So in this case, uh, the question of going looking at the shower, we'll say in this case that it's an 8.5 kilowatt shower, so a fairly common rating. And at 230 volts, uh, that actually is 37 amps. So the uh, total load uh, in this particular case then is just adding up the uh, four figures here. And the total of all of those comes to 97. And so if we add up the items here, that would actually come to 110. Of course is more than the rating of the main switch. And this is actually a very generous figure because let's say in reality it's not likely that the uh, socket circuit is actually going to be loaded up to around the 32 amp mark, although of course it will depend on uh, the that layout of the building and what sort of appliances you have in there. And something to be careful of with electric showers is that in virtually every case it's not possible to have uh, two electric showers in the same property because there's no diversity allowed there. So if you say I had two of these uh, electric showers here, two lots of even 37 amps is going to be a significant amount of load. It doesn't exactly leave much for the other circuits at all. And in fact the only real way you can do it is if the cooking appliances are 100% gas, which of course means then you wouldn't have the uh, cooker there at all, you're essentially replacing it with another electric shower. But uh, really an electric shower it's one fair property, otherwise you're going to be exceeding the recommended load for the installation. So let's look at diversity and the principle of course is that not everything in the house is going to be turned on at the same time and of course the rating of the circuit breakers does not necessarily match up with the total load on a particular circuit, certainly in the case of things like lighting. And in terms of calculating the maximum there are of course uh, the ways in the book provided here, uh, certain things about the uh, cooker circuit and whatever, but uh, you don't have to use those methods, uh, it's really just a bit of common sense seeing what loads are actually attached and the likely usage of those. And certainly things like the lighting with the old assumed 100 watts per room, that's not really applicable these days, so uh, definitely a case of actually seeing what lighting is installed and what type of lighting it is and therefore the sort of power that it's going to use. 
And just remember that things like heaters, there is no diversity permitted, so a whole load of storage heaters, it's going to be the total load. You can't actually get away from that because they're all going to switch on simultaneously and uh, usually take that full load for several hours. But certainly things like cookers, which have a multitude of elements inside, they may well take that load for a short period, but uh, over an average of, say, 10 minutes or half an hour, the uh, total load is going to be considerably less as the various elements sort of switch on and off just to maintain the temperatures that you've set. So until next time, thanks for watching.